That little blue healer we got, yeah. Libby. Yeah. That's a funny dog. <laughs> she catches flies. Eats them. Yeah, he's a- Your dog eats flies? Yeah. Yeah, blue healer. Yep. Uh, up there. If you want a good dog, you get you a blue healer. I had a blue healer in the fourth grade named Rocco. Rocco. I don't know whatever happened to Rocco. So she'll be sitting there, and you can see, I kind of like that scene of that movie with old Jack Elam. His eyes are looking. Oh, yeah. Her eyes will be, she'll be dead still, but her eyes are moving. <laughs> She's always And then a fly, alert. a fly come by, she <laughs> Alert. Catch it. <laughs> Eating fly. Catch Eating fly. fly. That dog's part frog. As quickly as you can. Yeah. Well, welcome back nice to the duck pebble. call room. We're back. Oh, I haven't been here in like two weeks. Where'd you go? Know. Where you been? I went to Colorado. Then I si was in Colorado. Then you were in Colorado. Yeah, Creed. Creed, Colorado. Creed. I was in, I was in Divide. Elevation, 8,863 feet. Oh. I feel like a one up. Oh, hey. Well, you don't I was want to, if you got lungs problems, you don't need to go to, up there. Yeah, how did you make it? Hey, because I thought I, I was gonna die. I had an oxygen bottle the whole time I was there. Good call. Mm. Boy, there ain't no air up there. That's yeah, it there's was none. My aunt and uncle moved there mm. from Shinny Lake to Divide, Colorado, at nine thousand feet, and I don't know how they ever breathe. No, no, you just it, it really is. You I, can't I, breathe. I learned something though. They back in the eighteen hundreds, Creed was. Had a big silver strike. Miners have a dangerous job because it was up on the mountain before they went in. <laughs> oh no! It's, yeah, it's dangerous. Can I tell you what I did? Do what? I drove a rental minivan to the top of Pikes Peak, and my my rear end cheeks will never be the same. You go yeah. fast. They're still clenched. Yeah. It was the scariest thing. They I've race ever done. up that thing. I know. I, they were racing like the day after we drove up it, and I watched them. I was like, "Y'all have lost your mind." I went like 15 miles per hour, like a little old lady in a minivan with my whole family. I was like, if I sneeze, my whole family's going to fall down a cliff and die. Yeah, that was like. It was insane. That was like when I went to the Alps in Switzerland. Okay, I'm hunting. Geo. And we're driving along and I'm in the passenger seat. And when I look out the window, Mm -mm. it's like a mile drop straight down. Good, Gary. Yo, and this guy's talking and driving. And we like to win over the mountain. Not looking at the road. Had a, had the a wreck. Had a wreck. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you had a wreck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a wreck in the woods in the Switzerland. I'm glad you're alive. Yo, I had to go back. We went back. You know, somebody come got us. Went back. Got with my uh, four-wheel drive. Had a big chain because we had went a little bit over the side. You know, and I had to pull the, his vehicle up. On your side? Yeah. Back Did you up, have back to- up on the highway? <laughs> no, it was wild. Don't Did you have out. to change shorts? Uh, I, yeah, I'm telling you, you don't know. It's when you're in the passenger seat and you're looking out and you're looking. I mean, I mean, you wonder why, you, you know, am I still on the road? It look, I'm looking straight down. Mm. That So my wife was in the passenger seat, and every time I would be like, oh, look over there, I'd get yelled at. Look at the road. <gasps> yeah, yeah, keep the eye on the road. <gasps> It's a, it's weird. Hmm. I'm not a mountain person. Are you scared of heights? I didn't think I was, but, but I'm, you are. I'm afraid of driving heights. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. That's not normal to drive back and forth in a minivan. Hmm. Cl- Cl- Chrysler Pacifica. Good mountain climber if you ever need one. What got me was the different terrain. Some of the mountains, okay, stuff is growing on it, trees and grass, and then some of it, it, it looks like just dirt. Nothing will grow on it. You get above the... Ter- ain't no air. Well, I'm just saying, it, it's wild. If it ain't no air, you can't grow. And then a lot of it was just solid rock. Solid. Yeah, that's just sticking straight up. That's a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> we have successfully right. described It's mountain. wild looking. It's wild rock. country. What else? Like, we've been gone for a minute, so we recorded some early. Yep. And that was, so we've been gone for... What else has happened in your life oh. since I've seen you last? Not much. Not much. I'm trying to get over this altitude change. Altitude. It'll get you. The It'll altitude, give you a headache. But, but we we did all do one thing together in the middle of all this. What did we do? Because hey, my mind ain't functioning right. right we now. went and watched a, a certain film. Oh, oh, yeah. The premiere. Blind. The premiere. The blind. Well, it was hey. a screening. It wasn't a screen, premiere. Oh, whatever. You can't, if you're listening, you probably can't figure out how to see it yet unless you're like an internet pirate or something. But don't do that. That would be uncool. Um, but we all got to go see it. It's worth going to see for the simple reason 
you see how uh, running up on Jesus can change a man. Okay, because it changed my brother drastically. Okay, yeah. You know, it changed his it. it changed his whole life, which is like if you throw a rock in water, ripples go out from where it hits. Mm-hmm. You know? That's a good way to put it. Well, no, no, I'm serious. That and, is, a, and that's poetic. What got me about when I seen seen the preview, you know, is was that it it impacted my brother's life. Then it impacted the whole Robertson family down the down the road, mm-hmm. the and, future, and others, and, and then the, and others, the and, world, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was pretty amazing to see what the effect was, you know, because a lot of this would not have happened if you know Bill Smith hadn't went. And preach the gospel. To, oh, it's to it's Philip. pretty much yeah. an unbelievable story. No, no. Yeah. How everything happened. Yeah. I mean, the only explanation is divine intervention. Yeah. And the story's always oh, yeah. been an incredible story. And mm. luckily, you and your brother have this gift of storytelling that is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, but the movie, I was nervous. I was like, is this like, is this going to be good? Is okay, this so be here, here, here's what I was thinking. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always thinking best case scenario. Mm-hmm. Or, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that uh, Zach Dasher is the head honcho. head honcho of this movie. So my expectations were not high okay. at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was going into it thinking these actors are going to be terrible. Yeah. yeah. Dasher is running this thing. It's, it might be decent, you know. Mm-hmm. But I will say this. I was... I won't say yep. shocked, but I was very surprised at the quality of this film. It, it and I come out of there. I, I stayed emotional throughout the whole movie. Uh-huh. I know. Mainly, you know, because See, I, know, I, I know what happened, and I, I li- I've lived through a lot of this post. I didn't know Phil um, B- BC, yeah, but I, I, I was started hanging out with him shortly thereafter. And uh, to see all that and uh, how all that went down was very emotional. And the, the acting was great. Hearing the it, stories come to life on a screen. Oh, yeah, man. It, it, was, was, it was great. So I can't recommend it enough. And I, I don't like going to movies. I ain't been to a movie in eight years. Because <laughs> well, most of them are not I, worth watching. No. Yeah, yeah huh. really. And I probably went in with the same attitude as Stone, like, because you see some Christian movies, and let's just be honest, a little cheesy, bad acting, all this, that, and the other. And so I was like, you know, I was like, I hope it's good. And then I also thought, like, am I going to be blinded by the fact, like, this is people I know. Like, mm. Bill Smith was my one of my papa's best friends, and I was best friends with his grandson growing up. So I'm like, am I going to be emotional just because I know these people? And then I got in there. I was like, "No, this is a this is a real movie that is r- really good." No, like, yeah, this isn't this isn't amateur hour by any. This was legit. Well, I like, was, like Sean was talking about, you got to understand, Zach Dasher is was my sister's son. Mm-hmm. Okay, he was he has no training. He is not a producer in all this. Okay, so when he's putting all this together, like I said, you somebody that's not. Not made for this, okay. But he might the be. most impressive thing to me was okay, is that you may have friends that you you've talked to them and they just ignore you. You know, you 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 know they're going down the wrong road and you're trying to stop them, and they just ignore you, and then finally you just give up. Okay, that no, I'm never going to reach him. He he he's lost. Well, that's the way I was with my brother. Mm-hmm. That's the way our whole family was, except for one person, my younger sister. Jan seen something or felt something or knew something, you know, that if the right person could talk to Phil, and, and Bill Smith was the only person, I think, that's why God chose him to do it. Hmm. And It's it- worth watching, folks, okay, because, you know, I gave up on my brother, which I shouldn't have. He's family, yeah. So don't ever give up on on your on your friends that you're trying to, you know, stop their downward spiral. Yeah, don't ever give up. How prophetic 
was Jan. You know, she told told Bill. She said, "If you wow. can, if you can bring him to the Lord, he'll bring thousands to the Lord." Oh. Oh. Turns out, nailed it. Well, she to get she sold him a little short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it was pretty. That's amazing. the amazing part of the story. Oh, it's okay. incredible! It was an amazing movie. So September twenty eighth, right? I'm looking to my left to make their head nod. September twenty eighth. Go to theblindmovie dot com. Look. I, this is not me saying that this is as someone who's seen this movie now i can say without a shadow of a doubt i don't care where it's at it's worth driving hours to go see when it comes out go see it buy your tickets now it it's incredible yeah it's, they, it was only missing one thing it wasn't missing you i'm gonna get no no it next. was missing one thing they should have had the the soundtrack should have been uh the guy that wrote the song Haley, the eagles drummer he wrote the song Dirty Laundry. Okay. <laughs> By Don Henley? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He wanted to. No, that's what's because, hey, look, Phil, <laughs> Phil's having his whole life, everything oh, yeah. bad, he's done. It, so, hey, he made his living on the mm. evening news, but. Aaron out dirty laundry. He did. The, <laughs> Phil's <laughs> dirty laundry is out there, but the redemption of Jesus Christ is out there too. So That's go right. check it out. Yeah. I got a couple other things to say about that movie after the break, <laughs> particularly when it comes to America's favorite uncle. So we'll be we're going to take a quick break. Look, I don't know what I walked in here today. Y'all got construction everywhere up in Duck. Everywhere. Yeah. There is everywhere. Like in. A lot of noise. A lot of noise. A lot, lot of, of racket. I can just yeah. imagine the problems y'all are going to have and Martin's going to have whenever, wherever he's at, he shows back up. Because employees, can ca- they can cause all kinds of interesting situations, huh? Yeah. Mm. Have you ever had a complaint filed against you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By I who, filed them against it. Who are you filing complaints uh, against? Against Willie. Against Willie? Well, he's yeah. the boss. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, so that's hey, going to be tough. He wasn't paying me enough. Yeah. He wasn't okay, paying right. you enough. But look, if you are a boss like Willie... You better talk to Bambi, otherwise you're going to have employees like Cy doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Because right. with Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They're available by phone, email, real-time chat, so onboarding and termination, Cy, run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. I don't even understand half the HR stuff in the world, so this would be perfect for me because I don't feel like learning that. And if you don't feel like learning that, call Bambi. With Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. And you know what the best part about it, Si? When you got to call them, you're getting a dedicated HR manager that's U.S.-based, so you know what they're saying, they know what you're saying. You, you know, don't need a translator. Yeah, you don't need right, a translator. Yeah, you, half the time, you, you I need one reset. anyway. No. Look, it's super easy. You don't have if to sit there and go, reset. representative, representative, representative. No, they're there, ready for you. HR managers can easily cost eighty grand a year. Good night. I should have went into HR. But Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free hmm. conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Duck Call Room under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled Bam, B-E-E dot com, Bambi.com and type in Duck Call Room. All right. So, Sai, now that we've seen the movie, I have I have a few questions for you because my wife cried literally the whole time. I got a question. If you put a slinky on an escalator, would it go on forever? Dep- I would. Depends on the speed of the escalator. That's a good question. <laughs> slinky on Because everyone elevator. loves a slinky. No. Slinky on the elevator. Go to that right. escalator go stop. Go slinky. Most escalators break down. That's why I like stairs. I know. Just go to the airport. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, back, back, back. To your so my wife's she the whoever that lady was that played Miss K, phenomenal job. I felt like I was looking at Miss K the whole time. Hello, yeah. Uh, the fact that they got some dude that looked like 1972 Bill Smith. Bill Smith's gone on to be with the Lord. Yep. His wife was there, which was really cool to see. But that dude looked just like Bill Smith, and that cracked mm. me up. Hello, and acted kind of like him too. But. But the eight-year-old Cy, when when and spoiler alert, he looked up and said, "Hey, hey, no, Jack. Did have you been this way <laughs> since you were eight? When the possums get after you, that's what you do. Well, no, I, uh, <laughs> that guy would play a really good role. <laughs> okay, he really did. Okay, because like a bunch of people told me, said my favorite was you on in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, he hit, he hit it, yo, know, because you got to, you know." I've got 
Mama and Daddy had seven kids. Okay, I have got four older brothers and two sisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's you know it was a it was a trip growing up. Okay, <laughs> well because every time your character showed up on the screen, because it's look, it's a heavy movie. Like yeah, the, you don't want to look. Yeah. Probably, I've get, always been the comic relief in life. Yeah. Okay, and, and I kind of was there too. Okay, you were, but even back then in those like. Like in the heavy times with Phil going through all that. Like there's a pretty serious scene with you. The thing that, you know, cracked me up, I should have said emotionally got to me. You know, me going with Phil on a lot of his uh, raids or whatever you want to call them, okay, made Kay feel better. But it didn't It didn't make any difference, okay, because he was, he was out of control. Yeah. But you it, sometimes you were there. Well, I, I just I was always talking to him, okay. But it just it didn't do no good. It's like he's falling on deaf ears. Yeah. That's interesting. Prideful, like all mm-hmm. of us. Yeah. yeah. So it was just, you know, it was a bad thing to go through. Okay. The movie was mild, okay, on some of the scenes where it showed them fighting. Uh huh. It was way worse. Mm. Okay, in real life, and that was one of the parts, the worst part of it. Yeah, you know, because that's why I think one scene said, "I told Kay, you don't deserve this. You need to go ahead and, you know, leave him and and start your new life." Yeah, because yeah, you know, he 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 was rough. Hmm. You that's know, a- some of those uh, scenes. Of course, I've heard those stories over the years. But uh, one of them that I enjoyed was when Phil got all liquored up and was racing the racing the cars. <laughs> yeah, I, that on is foot. that is true. Mm. Well, hey, look, half the time he never wore shoes. Okay, because his his feet are literally deformed. I'm, I'm oh, serious. They are. They are so bad. I'm serious. We've shown them on this. So point. he didn't he didn't wear shoes. Okay, even in the winter time. You know, when we was growing up, you know, we could step on glass. You could throw a jar, bust, bust it, and we'd step on it. Our feet were so tough, we didn't even cut us. <laughs> you know? I'm serious. I believe it. They run through the woods, squirrel hunting barefooted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and snake-infested woods. Yeah. I'm serious. I've seen him so many times put his foot down, okay, and then all you would see was just like that paper there. Oh Just yeah, a white spot. Ooh boy, cotton mouth. That's why they call them cotton mouths. Because when they open their mouth, all you see is this, just like a piece of cotton, big you know, piece of cotton. But yeah. uh, Phil told me that that they had it figured out that they don't matter what kind of car they were driving, that car could not beat him up to twenty yards. Yeah. Now thirty yards. 30, he, it, he would, it would catch him and pass him. Catch him and pass him. But 20 yards. 20 yards. He beat. He wins every time. Yeah. He said the only thing that he lost to was a motorcycle, a Harley. Yeah. He said a Harley beat him. That's insane. But uh, that's the only uh, time he yeah. lost. <laughs> yeah, a car couldn't, couldn't outrun him. And you, excuse me, you saw this in person. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. You got to understand. Where do you think he got his extra his, money? His motto, okay, <laughs> growing up. Every time you, when you was hunting, fishing, whatever, who's a man? That's said in the movie. You know, and I always said, hey, nope, leave me out. I'm a boy. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't made it to manhood. No, I don't want none of it. You are, are you there yet? <laughs> I still ain't there. You're still a boy? <laughs> yeah, I'm still a boy. <laughs> you know, hey, because it's, it's just crazy, insane. You know, it, it, just, the stuff he put, he's lucky to be alive. Okay, he's wrecked three or four pickups, sunk two or three of them. Sunk two or three boats or trucks? Oh, trucks and boats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Willie always tells, you know, I when Willie was speaking, which he's still speaking a lot, but when I was with him, he would always tell kind of that story about his dad and turning his life around. But, like, when he gets into the stuff at that bar, it like, Raccoon fighting? Oh no 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 no! It's yeah. it's insane. No no, uh, that's why I said <laughs> you're talking about totally out of control. Okay. Once you've reached raccoon fighting and betting on it, that hey, that's out of control. Yeah. 
You know, the one I always, you know, <laughs> that had the worst of it, okay, Al, Al's childhood was cut short. Yeah, because he had to grow. He's the oldest. Yeah. He's taking care of everybody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Al just, you know, he, he, he didn't have a, a, he's always been an old man. Al has, because he's had been taking care of business yeah. and the kids. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, he's told, he's shared some of that with me. You know, they used to live in those apartments at Darbone Lake, where mm-hmm. the, um, you know where I'm talking about right there at Jake's, 30, yeah. 33 Bridge. 33 Bridge, mm-hmm. how far? Half a mile? Yeah. Quarter of a mile? Yeah. Give or take. So, okay, we go to work and leave Al home with Jace. Of course, she had to. This is when Phil was, done went nuts, you know. Uh-huh. Al says he remembers, he Al wasn't, but eight years old. He was Sage's age. No, no. Jace was like two or three. He would grab Jace by the hand, and they would they'd want to go to the beach. A walk on the other side of the bridge. Yeah. They would walk across that thirty three bridge Ooh. at eight and three, eight yeah. and three, and go play on the beach while Kay was at work. That's hmm. no. You got to understand something about the Robertson family. My mother, okay, when we was kids, me and Phil and Tommy in there. You know, Jim Frank and Harold was you know they was older, okay, but me. Tommy and Phil were, you know, we're two years apart. So we was like stair steps. Wherever where they, Tommy went, Phil went, I went, yeah. So mama gets sick of us. She'd load us up in the Falcon car we had, drive 15 miles up, up river, drop us off the levee and say, hey, I don't want to see you to dinner or supper time. So we'd walk across the levee, get on Red River, find us a log to push off, get on it. Come to a sandbar in the middle of the river, play on it, you know. Just, you know, that was, what What did he think about it, you know? Because Jay's uh, talked about the other day about that topic. Growing up, we did some crazy things. Yeah. You know, just, but to us, it was normal. Can you imagine Johnny D turning your kids loose on the Red River? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I said, can't even I'll see you turn them loose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't even want to see you. It's a dark. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, we would never see my kids again. They wouldn't. They don't. They're not as resilient. No, no. We're running and chasing each other on the sandbar in the middle of Red River. Yeah. Okay, and it's got young willow trees on it, just you know, like bushes. Yeah, about head high. So we're running and just you know, Tommy's in head, fields behind him. I'm running, and all of a sudden it's just Tommy stops, and it's one of these deal. Wham, wham, wham. Me and Phil running into the back, and he's throwing his hand up and said, "Cobra." You know, what he had run into was one of them big old hog snakes. Hog nose snakes. Yeah. <laughs> when they get excited, they blow their head out, and they look just like a cobra. Oh, They're yeah. black. You know, <laughs> That's fantastic. So we step back. You know, Tommy said, hold Tommy said, no, wrong. I made the wrong with just, uh, you know, the identification here. He said, now that we've backed off, see, he settled down. He said, it, it's, I've seen this picture in, in, the, in a, you know, dictionary. He's not. It's not a cobra, but he can flare his head like a cobra, you know. So we go back home and he, we look it up in the uh, encyclopedia, you know. You know, hog snakes. Did y'all kill the snake? No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We killed the snake. <laughs> oh, that's snake funny. gotta go. <laughs> well, before we take a break, uh, one more time, and and I'm not even trying to give this movie a plug as much as I'm trying to give Jesus a plug here because. I, I truly believe this. This seeing this movie is going to turn some people's life around. It's going to save some people's marriages who are on the rocks and they see hope in right. the story of Kay and Phil. But the hope is in Jesus yep. Christ. Don't give up. So I, I want as many people to see this as possible. So it's theblindmovie.com right there. If you go to that, you can click get tickets. Type in your zip code. Find one close to you. If it's not close to you, you can bring it to your church. If you're 25 miles away or something like that from the nearest theater. If you hit that, you talk to your pastors, preachers, whatever you call them, and they'll, they'll do a showing at your church for your church. So, And it, it's incredible, and it is a true redemption story about a dude that was awful who is now Phil Robertson, who is one of the better speakers, got an amazing podcast, has brought thousands upon thousands of people to the Lord. And you talk about Al just then, who had a pretty rough childhood. Yep. He's hilarious. He's a great guy. He's full of joy. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering where that came from, it's Jesus Christ. And if you're wondering how it got there, this movie will show you. So go to theblindmovie.com. Check that out. Let's take a break. So you've been sleeping good lately? 
Yeah, have I been sleeping good? You've been sleeping good? Yeah, I've been sleeping I went on good vacation, and I could not sleep good. Because when you're on vacation, you know what you don't have? What you have? The, your pillow, their pillow. You got, okay. I don't know what pillow it is, yeah. but it ain't my pillow. I take my pillow with me. Yeah. You ta- you, is it a my pillow 2.0? Yeah, the well, little one. No, that's the only way to sleep right. when you're on the road. You got to take your pillow with you. And if you your pillow to. isn't a my pillow 2.0, you're doing it wrong. Dial. Have you ever dried off and the towel didn't work? No. Not their towels. That's the main. I've cause. found plenty of towels that don't work, but yeah. my pillows, my towels, <sighs> those, those towels do not yeah. get soggy. Well, that's, you're still wet. That's the main that's right. cause yeah. of dry skin. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's too thin. They don't make them. They don't make them fluffy enough. That's right. You they, gotta have. You gotta have how, water absorbent cloth and a towel that don't work. Yeah. And that's how my towel is. That's slippers. Right. Hey. Slippers. They make slippers. Right. I wear them brown for about 30 Carla minutes. Them Look, you've heard us talk about how much we love the My Pillow products. Mike Lindell, great American. It's everything you could ever want in a pillow. And then he said, you know what? Let's double it, make it better. So now the My Pillow 2.0 is out. It has the patented adjustable feel of the original My Pillow with a brand new fabric that is made for temperature regulating thread. The My Pillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. My Pillow 2.0 with temperature regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10 year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Look, if you listen to this podcast, you know we love all the products the slippers, the towels, the bed sheets. My Pillow 2.0, hands down, one of the best products he's got. So go check it out. So go to mypillow.com slash duck to get the all new My Pillow 2.0 right now. Get the all new My Pillow 2.0 and get the second one absolutely free when you use promo code duck. Again, just go to MyPillow.com slash duck and use promo code duck for a buy one, get one on the MyPillow 2.0 or call 800-969-3137 and use promo code duck. Order now because when they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. Well, Si, did you notice anything about your yard when you got home? Yes. <laughs> it was cleaned up and mowed. Yep. Who did it? And that... Uh, piece of wood that was left over where they put it up to pour the concrete that was gone yeah it would look nice thank you sir well hey <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> yeah. so i called me he said hey my yard man yeah he left the quit country. the business he quit yeah. left hey, the country and he yeah. said and my so, grass is about knee high well that's, that's all this rain it was about it was about waist high <laughs> when i got there i had to mow that grass <laughs> four <laughs> times <laughs> it was bad it was bad it was well you can't it's hard to mow right now hey oh it's well, you can't mow when it's you know you got water in your there's yard. water everywhere oh, yeah. and it, it was 115 degrees yeah, oh, it, it, it was like hot it was last hot. week but i got lucky to see uh some um you had friend, a f- friend of my wife's uh they could bring their kids to to the sportsman's camp every uh-huh. year at Camp Chioka. Well, uh, she brought her husband this time, my, old Michael Oville, and he's he's the irrigation man. So he he was uh, pretty handy on the business end of a weed eater. Yeah, you know what I'm okay. saying. So I he, met him. Yeah, and he was like, oh, yeah. "Yeah, Stone told me to come by, and say hey." I was like, "Oh, cool, man." He's like, "Yeah, let's hang out with Stone." Ended up mowing Sai's yard. I said that. Oh well, I had welcome. <laughs> oh, he's, You're in now. Oh, so Johnny Day. I used. I, I don't have. I want to. Fancy zero turn lawnmower, so I use Willie's equipment. Yeah, good call. And I, I told all I call Willie. I'm like, look, hey, size yard man is MIA. <laughs> so I need to go mow his yard. And, you know, you care if I use your your equipment to do it? He said, yeah, that's fine. And he said, tell side the first one is free. <laughs> <laughs> He's been Willie will be in the yard business for too long. That's it. Oh well, yeah, he's got enough lawnmowers. <laughs> Uh, the first one's free. The That's second one's funny. going to cost you. When was the last time you mowed grass? <laughs> hey, you talk about a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The yard business has gone insane. Oh. I, I used to mow five acres with a push mower yeah. for $5 and think I would done good. A dollar an acre. Yeah, a dollar an acre. Yeah, you- Nowadays, oh, no. It's four or five hundred dollars for a yard my size. Just yeah. think it, five hundred dollars. I'll do it. I'll to, do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think oh, it's, it's five hundred. It, I'll no. do it for three. It's a it's a thriving business. <laughs> it is. Right. It's, it it uh depends on what all. Nowadays, you pay by the month, like anything yeah. else. Yeah, they do your your got your uh, flower beds, your yard, and everything else. So. It's yep. too hot to mow. Well, hey. 
It's hot outside. Yeah, it's hot. It's good. We got a cool yeah. front right now, so it's only like 94. Mm-hmm. I know. I, I had to give myself a haircut the, whenever it was like, don't go outside or you'll die. Keep your pets inside. Like the TV mm. was telling you, heat advisory. I was like, it's time. Yeah, in the summertime as kids, we used to get a mohawk. Huh. I bet about, you know, about all inch and a half. You cut everything else off right down the middle. Oh, yeah. Or did you wild. just leave that for? Yeah. Hey, look. Yeah. Just whack it yeah. off. I went high and tight. I'm yeah. going bald anyway. Yeah, I this, almost yeah. told her to shave the whole thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm to that point now. Yeah. Is, I'm fixing to shave my head. Just shave. <laughs> I ain't got squat. That, hold on. Yeah. Well, no. You might as well. Yeah, you might as well. Just. Yeah. I laughed because I thought you had been shaving it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. We I did it. shave it one time when we was in... Uh, Wisconsin at the uh, Ducks Unlimited thing, the great outdoors. We used to go up there, and that's what that guy, did you ever go up there? The uh, great outdoors. That guy would say, welcome to the great outdoors. He'd be on the intercom. But anyway, <laughs> W.E. bet me. He said, I, I bet you, I'll give you $20 if you'll shave your head. That's what he said. $20. I said, $20 now. He said, okay, I'll let you shoot first when you come to Arkansas. I said, I'll shave. Right, right. Right. So what would it I take shaved. for us to get you back in a mohawk? Back in well, a mohawk. Well, it wouldn't be a very good mohawk. That's what you say. I don't think it's physically yeah. possible. Yeah, right? it ain't, it, that ain't That's possible. That's about right. all I got. It's just right on the top of them. But, but hey, if you, here if in you the make back. it the right price. Right in the you, front. You got the donut. If you make yeah. it the right price, I would shave it. What's then it? you can see all the scars I've got on my head. From what? Uh, from childhood. <laughs> you have scars <laughs> on your head? Oh, yeah. Well, what do you head, buddy? Hey, look, thing? look. We, we had, we'd get the biggest needle we could find, get a big kitchen match, take a razor blade and fit it four ways, put, put feathers in it, okay, and then put that needle in it and have dart, you know, Stick stick needles in everybody, and y'all stick each other in the, oh, head, yeah. in the head. Right, right. just right. You better you know watch your eyes. You know it wasn't a <laughs> below the neck y'all rule. Stick it in. Oh. No, it wasn't. All, hey, all you what would hear, do? all you'd hear, is, you'd hear running, you'd hear feet, and then you hear ah, <laughs> somebody run around the corner and had hey, pull it out of my back. I can't reach it. We used to get the chicken <laughs> feathers and stick them in a corn back of a corn cob. Yeah. Oh yeah. And throw, yeah. That's an airplane. You could throw them for a long. Hey, they, 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 hey, like a rocket. Mm-hmm. You ever do that? Uh, throw, throw corn cobs. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> you never. That one cow piles. We throw used to cow have piles cow, at yeah. each other. Yeah, cow oh, patty. That. Cow, cow patty, patty wars. Cow patty fights. Yeah, yeah. cow patty wars. No, I can't yeah. say that. Hey, that. my brother had one there one time. He, it was it was crusty. It was, yeah. The sun had baked it hard on the outside. Ugh, when you flipped inside. it over, when you <laughs> flipped it over, it was soft. Oh yeah, you know, and that, hey, they, he was coming around a tree, and my, my brother was just spack. Yeah, we would not. It was hard that. enough. You well, hey, throw there, was, there was a fist fight. Going I would have told on you. Oh, yeah. No, no, there was a fist fight <laughs> going on. Black eyes, loose teeth. No, that explains Did y'all ever picking mushrooms growing out of them? Ah, uh, no. No, no I've <laughs> seen it though. Yeah, I've seen it too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't ever do that. Uh, <laughs> may have a little wang to it. <laughs> oh, this is gross. All right, we, we make need... you see things. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, things that ain't I can't there. even remember what they call now, but anyway, it's a, a sticker plant, but they grow. They you you a cactus. No, I can't, I can't remember the name of. It. But they got a real good. Uh, it's like an almond in the flower, you know. You can eat them, huh? But but it's they they rub. Where are they grow? Yeah. Cactus. It is like a cactus. But Where you are they grow at? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it it was a big black like an almond <laughs> inside inside. Bull nettles. Yeah, that's what it was. Bull nettles. Bull nettles. Bull nettles. Yeah, bull nettles. You eat the seed out of the bull nettles. Yeah. I doubt it. But yeah, hey, but it it stick you. You know, you'd be pulling some splinters it. out of your stupid thumbs and fingers. I ain't doing it. But it was good eating. It oh, was good, yeah. Speaking of good eating, we need to take a quick break and talk about one of my favorite holidays when okay. we come back. Well, it just go. happened. We can do that.
So this Fourth of July, I got a, I got lucky and scored some wagyu brisket. Oh, I did too. Wagyu at, is from the same place. From the same place, the the, the people at uh, Show Me, um, is that the name of it? Show Me. I can't they remember. They donate uh, prime beef to the sportsman's camp, Camp Chiyoka, mm-hmm. every year. Okay. okay. And there was some left over. I like that. An old boy gave me a call and said, hey, we got a, he left a pile of meat here. We need to. It needs to be gone. You yeah, know, can't we, need, we, need, we need to cook it. Can't freeze it. So uh, I scored me a Wagyu brisket. Mm. And then I took a bottle of this W and used it as a binder on that brisket. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me tell you something. Spoke the, uh, cooked that thing twenty four hours. It was like a, it was like a big block of jello. What'd with, you cook it on? With a dark bark on the outside Ooh. of it. When you picked it up, it was just. I mean, I could literally cut that thing with a butter knife. Ooh. It was incredible. I mean, there's a difference between wagyu. Oh yeah. And choice. It is. Well, I got one or question. Select what? Why didn't I get a call? Well, you was in <laughs> Colorado. Yeah. What did you cook it on? Uh, what tent? I smoked it on, uh, I, I like to cook mine about 210 for 24 hours. 24 hours. I like to get that, that in, uh, on you. internal. How good, well, how good was it? It well, was. It sounds wonderful. It was incredible. Yeah. It, it's, it's probably the richest, best piece of beef I've ever had. It don't last long. Now, I, I like a good uh, dino rib, a good beef rib. They're rich, rich, rich. But yeah. this right, this Wagyu brisket, it was something about it. That you know, it was I could you can't eat too much of it. Yeah. So rich, but it was meat candy is what it what it is. Meat but I use that W as a binder. That's the first time I ever done that. And then it had a good bark and that out, put outside. A, put a man that helped. So, oh, it, it was probably the best. It was the best one I've ever done. That sounds good. Was it close to your tenderloin beef tenderloin? Well, that's a totally different, yeah, different but deal. But you know that tenderloin is. You know, it, it, that's hard to beat. I, it is. I can make what you do on the fourth of July. I went to Creed, Colorado. Oh, you were in. You were there on the fourth. Yeah, yeah. That was like yeah, two he days just ago. Talked about yeah. it. Yeah. I know. I yeah. didn't know. I yeah. I thought that was this weekend. For Me, something. Philip, and Matt Owens went up there and preached, shared the gospel with the good people of Colorado. That's good. Good deal. It was a good. It was a good uh, event. What'd you that's do? A beautiful country. I went fishing. What'd you catch? Was there boats everywhere? No, you got to leave about 11. Yeah. Okay. Too hot. When them, when them skiers start coming, that's when you go Where'd put you it go? on the trailer. Darbo. Oh. What'd you catch? Yeah. I caught a bunch of them. Uh-oh. Did Miss Paula go with him? White put. She did not. Oh. There you go. She don't like going in the morning. She you don't like white get, but deer hunting, she'll get up for you to go deer hunting. <laughs> Fishing, no. Deer. She likes the long line. Long, long line it is fun. It's fun. It's you late. You, uh, you just sit in the you, chair. You got, a, you got a shade over the top of you. Now I'm fixing to get one, though. I'm going to get one of them tops that come up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to have, you gotta have, you gotta have it. You going to think. Yeah, you got to have it in July and August. Yeah, too hot. You got to yeah, have it. Hot. But you go on by 11. Yeah. You got to catch them and go. Yeah. Fourth of July is a tough day to fish. Ooh. Remember that time we wore them out on Caney? Fourth of July, it was hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, beggings, too. Beggings, I mean slabs. Ooh, I think I might go there in the morning. I like that right there. (laughs) Yes, every one of them. Uh, The reason I remember it, because I caught 17 in a row. Yeah. Right beside Silas Merritt. Yeah, that's the day you stepped it on my rear end. Yeah. (laughs) I just, they wouldn't hit my bait. He's having a flashback. No, no, oh, <laughs> no, in a bad one. I'm, yeah, having, I'm, I'm having a nightmare. I laughed at that. It was, it was, he's right. He caught 17 fish before Sig even got a bite. And look, what made me mad was his line is like this. Mine would be under his line, and it would be boom. And I'd, say, I'd keep reading. Uh, yours was on top of mine. Well, hey, I never did. Yeah. yeah. They just Too wouldn't fast. Mine. Too fast. So I pulled, we were in my boat, and I pulled, I saw the top on the screen. I said it had about 50 big crappies on it. Uh-huh. So the way we did it back then, I'd, I'd put the nose of the boat into the wind. Since we're using a little bit light jigs, we let oh, the wind. Oh, with the wind. 
the mm-hmm. wind helped you make the long yeah. cast. Yep. There you go. And the further you're away from the crappie, the better, the they, better bite. they bite. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I'd get right at the end of casting distance, so that one little 130-second jig, and set that one of that fancy, um, what was them trolling motors called? The yeah, men coders. Yeah, they the spot lock on. Yeah, yeah. The spot lock. It was the old tires then. It was old, I had the old tracks. It stays, no matter what the yeah. wind's doing. It'll so it just right held there. you there. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But you got to put the nose. So we yeah. had a bay boat, we'd fish out of the back. When the back, Cy and Godwin were like standing right beside each other. And I said, I threw a buoy out. I said, y'all cast at that buoy. It was insane. Give it about an eight count and yeah. slow roll it. Slow roll it. That was the key. Seven. Slow. Teen. Seventeen to Cass one. in a row. Then you did catch one. I did catch one. After his and look, what, what made me mad, like Stone said, they was about like that. They was all beggings. Begging. I mean, good ones. Yeah. We every, every, time, laughed. every time he'd do it, he just he's like he's sticking me with a knife. And look, God would catch fish on every every cast. So I said, All right, they ain't they ain't biting, let's get out of here. That's right. I said, crank it up. <laughs> I, I said, well, wait a minute. Let me said, real listen to you. He said, wait a minute. Let me get this one in. I said, you sorry, Russell. <laughs> I think I'll go there tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> it was hot. It was hot that magnets. day. It was on. Oh, that, that was that, that silver. That silver. It was the trout magnet. That oh, little the trout bit. magnet. Yeah. yeah, the millie. Pepper, pepper and salt. Salt and yeah. pepper. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. I remember the day me and you went. We'd fish like five, five deep brush tops mm-hmm. and we had five in the cooler yeah one fish on each yeah. top yeah yeah mm-hmm. one fish on each top that's so what i, I said, well it, it ain't working on the deep water he said i got a couple in the shallow water let's go try them. so we run up there and uh, he threw out two buoys and it's about two foot square and he said you gotta hit in between that square you know if, if you don't nope i threw like 87 casts just as soon as it was ever two. cast hole. Yeah. Hey, one, yeah, two. Yeah. Oh. Yo. You can still do it there. I had the cooler full, you know, so I said, he said, How many more? I said, just one more. I said about fifteen times. Yeah. You know, finally <laughs> I threw again and just I was reading a good one in. And Stone said, I had enough of it. All I hear is the you know, one in the pocket and I said, click, just cut the line. Watch it Took now. the pole from me. He said, I got to clean these stupid things. Yeah, I was about to say, you ain't yeah. fishing no more. Oh, That's so, the reason yeah. Stone wanted to go. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You were yeah. catching, and yeah. he was going to I was, I was taking them yeah. off the hook. Uh, like, every one in the ice chest. Yep. Yeah, every now and then he'd get caught up in the top, and I'd retie his jig. Yeah. I never made a cast. 87. And then you never got any and, help and cleaning them. I had one bag of ice in that 65 quart <laughs> Yeti, and I was jumping up and down on top of that lid trying to shut it. So mm-hmm. shut it. Oh, it was loud. In the work. hot summertime. You yeah. know, people, they'll just fish for crappie in the spring. Won't even fish well, in this the was, summer. This was spring when we done When y'all yeah. done that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We's in the back They'll bite the right now. The best one was I always lay down when he's searching. You know, so I'm laying down. and That's the fun you know, he he He'd be talking to himself. Well, okay, that's pretty talking good. That's, you know, that looks pretty good. He got a few on it. Then he said, Whoa. When he's saying, yeah. whoa, he's throwing the buoy out. Yeah. You know, and he comes around, he throws two buoys out where you have your mark to, you know, throw. So he's, golly, look at this. Well, he didn't got my attention now, so I jump up and look. It was a huge top, you know. And I wish it had been at night because it, it would look like a giant Christmas tree. There, I bet you there was a thousand it was a lot. Ain't no telling. I'm saying, I bet you it was 1,000 on this treetop, but when we got to catching them, they was all just about that that big. Yep. Hand size. Every one of them. So, they still fun to catch, yeah. though. Well, they're fun to catch, but I like it when he says, uh-oh, it ain't many. It's about 15. He said, but they are. Yo, know, these are bulls. <laughs> yeah. They keep bro. growing. Yo, they hey, started you throw, his forearm. Oh no, yeah, oh no, went to his elbow. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. they're mid bicep. Oh no, you throw out oh, there. They were hey, records now. Yo, you'll catch one, maybe. Yeah. Yo, know, but if if you catch one of them big ones, hey, it's, they get locked all then. Mm. You know, because you look at them and they, you see them there. Talk, well, it was 15. We caught one. Mm-hmm. Now there's 14. They caught yep. one. We said, fool around there. Talk, 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 so there ain't nobody there. Hey, we can need to go move on. Yeah. Ain't it's nobody fun. More. It's fun looking for them. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is. It is fun. That well, hummingbird, boy. Oh, yeah. You got to have that side image. Side yeah. image. I, I I'm not saying some of them, the fish, you know, the smaller ones will be all in the top. Or right on top of the top. Yep. 
and you'll look, and the, and the big ones will be off to the side. But nobody fishes off to the side. Yeah, they'll be a little off out the trees over here, like you said. Yeah. yeah. They'll be just sitting over. Well, Dude. hopefully you all had a great 4th of July if you're listening. Hopefully you got around the pool, got on the water somewhere, went fishing, ate some barbecue, ate hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever it was you did. Oh, yeah. Did you pop any fireworks? Oh, the other had big fireworks. This way. Did somebody in our neighborhood, Stone, had the loudest firework oh. known to oh. me. Well, yeah, well, and it wasn't Willie. Yeah. I it, thought it was Willie. Nope. It was It was just, it would go off like every 20 minutes. It would boom, shake the whole neighborhood. Yeah. But hopefully you had fun celebrating July 4th, 1776. It's a reason to be thankful. We come in from Colorado on the 4th that night in, in about like 10 o'clock and everywhere on Monroe. I, know, I bet you that was cool. I know. It, was, it sounds pretty it was cool. Pretty, really was. Because we celebrated it at Jason's long time. Uh, we didn't. Log we forgot town. to talk about that. Yeah. We we'll talk about that right yeah. after this. We'll take a break, talk okay. about that, yeah. getting the emails. Yeah. Break. This is like the catch up episode because we all hadn't seen each other in a minute. Yeah. But the Jason, Missy, and Jep and Jessica hosted. You were there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Faith, Family, Freedom. Yep. That was wonderful. Okay, first of all, it was, you know, when we're going down there, Philip drove me, you know, and I'm looking. There's cars. Jason's got a levee right by the river on that, and there's cars both ways as far as you can see. Wow. I said, good grief. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get in, Philip. He said, no, I've already worked it out with Jason and Missy. We, we, you had special parking. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I had special <laughs> parking. So, look, they, they, Jason gave a, a wonderful freedom based gospel presentation okay and then we had fireworks you know but they baptized 40 people mm. wow down there and then like it's a church that morning i know bill baptized 19 oh wow well, so that was pretty pretty Two more good lick the for the almighty that's like yeah. 21 total 20 21 that morning yeah and forty at this, so yeah. sixty one. Oh yeah, sixty one. That's people. amazing. That's oh, awesome. it was. Uh, it was. A, it was a good day. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah. saw some pictures. I met some people from that, just that were in town. Run into them, and I met the. I got to give a shout out to this this guy. He might be your biggest fan in the world. He. I don't know if he, his name's Asher. Asher. He's from Lake Charles. That dude has watched every episode of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> May I. I don't know how many times, but he had that sucker memorized. He's eight years old, and he was asking me all sorts of questions, and I was like, this is the funnest kid in America. I was like, just keep asking me questions. Then he'd be disappointed when I didn't remember. I was like, well, you remember? Tell me. Right. And he would you just quote them things. So there was a lot of cool people in town for that. That was awesome. So he's got a photographic memory, one of those he's, he's got, card yeah. counter types. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He, mm. he, he remembers. He, he said, I memorized Duck Dynasty. I was like, that's cool. And then he started asking me why I wore flip-flops and if Godwin really ate that many donuts. I was like, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> that the Robertson bloodline has that, has that quality in some of them. You know, Jason's got that card reader mentality. Oh, yeah. And uh, I asked my eight-year-old the other day uh, who won the Royal Rumble in 1989. And she said, Big John Stud. <laughs> 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 she she got on a kick where she watched every Royal, Royal Rumble wrestling. Uh, okay. Good grief! From 1988, you, you know who won the very first Royal Rumble? Your okay. boy Hacksaw Jim Hacks Duggan. Uh, Hacksaw Jim <laughs> Duggan boy. Yeah, he was on an episode of Duck Dynasty. He was on there. So she knows every winner of the Royal Rumble from 1988 to right now. That's I was like, I had wow. the privilege of hunting in. Uh, uh, yeah, pheasants. We hunted pheasant with the uh, Undertaker. Oh yeah, and he was cool. He oh, was he Mark, was cool. Yeah, Mark. Was yeah, really one good. of the most pleasant, yeah, humble, nice humans I've ever scariest, met. Scariest looking man you'll ever run up. Oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, like barely. I, no, no, but except he, but scarier. He's really, a a nice guy and really a uh, born again Christian. I yeah. might add. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fantastic. Oh, but say, uh, he's a cool dude. Oh yeah, really Sage, Sage got on that wrestling kick. Yeah. She wouldn't get off of it. <laughs> So they they came to the Civic Center last week, I think. Did you go? And my buddy uh, Joseph, I trained jujitsu with. He, him, and his wife, and another friend of mine, his wife, took Sage because I had to cook for uh, Willie. Took Sage to the wrestling, and she made a big sign for Ronda Rousey. 
<laughs> our hero. Our hero. Oh, oh yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, she looked at me when she got back. She said, Daddy, I'm going to be the baddest woman on the planet one day. <laughs> I said, is that right? I, said, yeah. Hey, I believe that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I believe that. You invited me to eat some over down. I come in and sit down in the recliner. Uh, and Sage comes in and gets, just gets in my face and said, Uncle Si, you want to wrestle? I said, no. no. <laughs> Get out of here. I, I don't want you to hurt me. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, so, so I, if she says she's gonna be the baddest woman, yeah, I agree. I, I'll, 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 I'll say, yep. She'll tie you in a knot. No, yeah, I believe. I'm not missing. I her. watched her try to hit. Hey, she made a 17 year old husky boyfriend of of Carly. She, hey, he was fixing to pass out. Put him in the choke. Hey, she put the chokehold on him, and I'm serious. He dropped his phone and was going. And I said, "Let that boy go." <laughs> <laughs> she choked him out. He was he was just far from from gone. Uh, wow. I lied. Oh. I'm going to send my two boys down there just to get beat up sometime. <laughs> hey, they yeah. need well, it. Well, she'll do it. <laughs> yeah. There's no better therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's therapy, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I that's me- funny. I remember oh, when Stone oh. first started that, and he was going, he said, well, I'm fishing to go get my butt whooped. I got to get my mind right. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> get my mind. It's time for therapy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that's funny. Oh, oh we're, well, we got time for like an email or, or two. We're going to keep it light. This has been a good, fun episode uh, going through all the fun stuff that's been happening. But Ellie from Murfreesboro, Tennessee emails in. Woo. Um, top. Yeah, uh, but she's she's troubled by something. Uh oh. Right, see if we can help her. We I think uh, we need to help America with this one. Everybody uh, apparently in Murfreesboro feels the need that they have to just back into a parking space from <laughs> Walmart, church. Everybody just waiting, sitting around. Large vehicles. Just everybody's got back in. She and she needs to know our opinion. Should you back into a parking space? Or should you just pull in? So what? What's the issue with this? Everybody's no. The, have you ever got behind that person that feels they got to back in? They take like three tries and had to wait five extra seconds. Yes, boy. Well, but here, so here's my opinion on this: just park in the first place you see and pull in, and th- then you're done. What's wrong with balcony? You get out quicker. I don't know. I think what they have here is they got <laughs> escape issues. Okay, they feel closed <laughs> in. They got to go. Uh, I'm serious. I think they got a problem with, okay, they, they're they like the world's closing in on them, so they've always got a back in where they can make a quick getaway. Yeah. I'm back in the places. <laughs> you, but, if there, but if there's somebody behind me, I pull in, you know, a, eat and join or something. I don't. I just pull in. I don't back in. I kind of have. ain't nobody behind me. I'm I'll serious. Back it, it's, I, I think because I've got it too. What? Because like when I go somewhere, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want anybody to close me in where I can't leave. That's because you'll so, leave without saying goodbye. Well, and we'll never no, no, know no. what happened. Well, to then you. that's why I'll go. I'll go over here and park out to the side or or back in, because I don't want to be waiting there for thirty minutes for somebody who got me blocked in. So it is a, a, an escape issue. Now here, here's okay. the problem. Well, here's America has a has a problem when it comes to getting behind the wheel of a vehicle this is true <laughs> they lose all patience so don't get in a hurry just let the man back in it's five sec five to ten seconds just relax take a oh wait field. oh wait that's a good point okay because i have i have a, <laughs> a, a issue about okay my patience is not the best it could be yeah okay <laughs> Uh, I see. So I guess I've never really ran into this because, like, you'll never probably ever catch me with a good parking spot. Like, I'm not looking. I'm, first spot that's open, I yeah, see. I'm yeah, like, that was mine. Yeah. And I, and you have to walk because I timed it one time because I watched somebody driving around and around to find a good parking spot, mm-hmm. and I just parked like in the back of Walmart. I'm like, whatever. I'll just park here and walk in. I was already inside before they. I was like, all it was was thirty. Well, 40, they don't want to walk forty yards of steps. Get your steps in, and you'll be patient. Yeah. It's yep. as simple as that. Just do the opposite. Park as far away as you can. There you go. Well, oh. I always have to think, okay, look, hey, be courteous. 
Be nice to everybody. Be courteous. Yeah, be courteous. Be yeah, I, th- I think in this situation, just, yeah. you know, try, try to take a deep breath. Yeah, slow down. Know okay. in your mind. Oh, okay, I ain't that It ain't going to make a difference. There are yeah. plenty of impatient, idiotic drivers out there. And if you can <laughs> get to the point where you can laugh every time that happens, when somebody pulls out in front of you, happens to me every time I go somewhere. Somebody pulls oh, yeah. out in front of me. Somebody slams on their brake. Somebody's looking at their phone at a stoplight. It's maddening, but <laughs> expect it because this is going to happen. Yeah. Laugh it off and move on. I laugh at the people that are driving around looking for the perfect parking spot, and I'm on a mission to park further away from them and be out before they find a parking spot. Right. Yeah. Positive it's attitude fun. with a lot of courtesy. Yeah, there it there is. There you go. I'm going to send us out of here with a Bible verse. Uh, happy Fourth of July to all those living in America. I did get an email from like South Africa the other day, which was cool, but we celebrate in America July 4th. Uh, it's all about freedom in this country, but there is a greater freedom that can be found, and we talked about it when we talked about Phil's movie, and that is in Jesus Christ. So Galatians 5.1 it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If you're wondering how to live the most free life you can, I don't care what country you're from. I don't care if you're American, English, Australian, South African, or anybody else in the world. The greatest thing you can be a part of is Jesus Christ, and that is the only place true freedom will ever come from. Mm-hmm. Amen. We'll catch y'all next right. time right here in the Duck Call Room. Bye. We're out. Bye.